my channel Awaken with Pradnya after so so many days or uh, rather months. <laughs> I'm particularly making this video to update all of you about my amazing trip to the Babaji's cave. If any of you don't know, I consider Mahavatar Babaji as my guru. He has always been directly or indirectly guiding me on my journey. Uh, there are a lot of stories that are connected to Mahavatar Babaji, which probably I would share along with this video. So since four to five years, since I came to know that there is this amazing cave of Mahavatar Babaji in Uttarakhand, some of the other reasons came coming up and I was completely pinned down in Dubai. When I came to India, I had this urge in my heart that I really want to visit his cave. I searched on Google and I really got this feeling that, okay, this is not an easy itinerary. I have to go to Delhi from flight and then I have to catch some bus or a car to go to this place. And it's not a very safe area. So how would I, and I don't know the place. So how would I manage? So I kind of kept it aside thinking that, okay, let me look into it. Maybe after a few months, it's not possible because it's a rainy season right now in India. So rains are heavy. There are landslides happening in the mountainous areas. So I thought I don't know much about the place. So I will look into it later. Within two days, uh, a soul sister, Akanksha, called because she wanted to take my interview on her channel. And she mentioned that she is going to this cave. I had already given up on this idea of going there. And somehow the things just worked out. Everything was sold out. She said the group I'm going with has already been full. I told her to ask and somehow I just miraculously got accommodated at the last minute. So I truly believe that this was the calling. Like I was absolutely invited over there and my wish was noticed by Babaji and he just called me there. Uh, so this is the backstory of how I went to this place. This has absolutely brought an amazing shift into me. There is this very amazing, beautiful place called Dwarhat where we stayed. It was a very, very beautiful, very, very peaceful uh, place to be at. I would love to be there and write. It's, it's an amazing place to just be. Nobody can disturb you. It's full, uh, surrounded by amazing nature and nice animals and birds chirping. And it's a very, very nice place. Very ideal to write a book, actually. You could just book a place over here and write a book and complete it without any disturbance. Very, very high vibration, I would say. Good morning, everyone. After so many days, I'm just having a very, very early morning walk at a very amazing place where the cows are grazing and I can hear a sound of a waterfall and all the na nature sounds. So I'm going to start with uh, day one where uh, we visited this amazing temple of Haida Khan Babaji, who is also believed to be a Shiva consciousness, who just appeared at this place in 1970 and he took a samadhi in 1984. So for 14 years, he was uh, relentlessly working towards awakening people into the higher paths of consciousness. Uh, he's believed to be a fierce kind of a consciousness of Shiva. Uh, I heard a lot of story of this Babaji, which are absolutely mind-blowing. And people say that uh, this Babaji was very stern. Uh, I had not known much about this Ascended Master. But when I visited the temple, Haida Khan temple, there is this beautiful, amazing meditation room. We meditated there almost for one hour. 
it was an amazing experience and the whole surrounding of this temple is absolutely high vibration i could just be there for hours and hours and days together so what you are seeing here is the surroundings of the temple if anybody wants to know more about aida khan baba ji and his work i am giving the links uh, in the description of this video the second day was about visiting mahavta baba ji cave everybody was looking forward to visiting this place all those who don't know who mahavta baba ji is mahavta baba ji is a ascended master who was who is believed to be born in 203 ad so it's technically thousands of years ago and he is believed to be a bodiless yogi he attained that sort of ascension where uh he doesn't uh, some say that he can appear whenever required in the physical body however he is still alive and he stays in the higher vibrational places and spiritual ability to be present at different places at the same time he has a astral he exists on the astral plane and he can also manifest himself physically whenever he wants if you ask me what i have understood um in my journey especially when it comes to baba ji this is my personal observation that many many uh, twin flames who are awakening especially in the twin flame context uh they have been receiving baba ji's guidance and somehow i have been connected to certain people who are also being guided by baba ji in a very mysterious way like for example uh ila who's in the view i took uh, in empower hour she was uh, very strongly being guided by baba ji her daughter tanuja who is uh, the 20 or 21 right now awakened at a very early age and she started visually seeing baba ji and she is receiving baba ji's guidance on every day basis um i was mysteriously connected or uh, there are very amazing synchronicities when i look back how i was connected with these two amazing ladies then another lady called d who just uh, gave empower our interview two months back uh, she also is very strongly guided by mahavtar baba uh, akanksha who accompanied me on this trip also has been guided pretty profoundly by baba ji uh, and there are many more i know who are being guided by baba ji and somehow we are being linked or we are being connected with each other and uh, as pallavi says master pallavi who had organized this cave trip for us uh, she is a spiritual teacher uh, and she always says that baba ji looks after the ascension experiment uh, where the whole earth is ascending uh in the fifth dimension he is kind of a ceo of this whole process and he is working with so many people at the same time uh very very strongly and uh, as i have progressed in my journey i really feel that that presence his presence that i have got in my journey through my dreams through synchronicities through the kind of physical unfoldings that have happened in my life i am i'm so amazed to see that such an ascended master who is guiding so many people so well by with his own amazing mysterious ways so i can keep talking about him there are so many stories about him which i could probably share
so baba ji's cave is located at the hill in the village called kukuchina that is 13 kilometers away from the dwarhat so we were heading to baba ji's cave it is said that uh, mahavtar baba ji initiated his disciple nahiri mahashaya into this ancient meditation system of kriya yoga in 1861 so it is believed that he manifested his physical body to meet nahiri mahashaya and initiate him and that whole story unfolded in this cave Okay, so we are uh, climbing uh, the way. If any of you want to understand the historical significance of this cave, it is. I would strongly want to suggest that uh, you read chapter number thirty-four, titled "Materializing a Palace in the Himalayas." In the autobiography of yogi many times the dogs come and accompany you if you are not finding the road there are always uh, there are already two dogs here who are just following us or <laughs> we are following them and they are kind of showing us the way uh, i have heard so many stories of these dogs uh, they are baba ji's dogs and they always accompany you till you climb हेलो स्वीटी कस है छान है पानी छान है प्याय आई एम गोइंग टू ट्राई ड्रिंकिंग वॉटर फ्रॉम द वॉटरफॉल वाओ It tastes heaven. This is freezing cold. It's very pure. I can keep drinking it forever. Sweetie, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ha, bag me dalo. Thank you. Baba ji namo. So many many kriya yogis from all over the world visit this cave. So there is this Yogada Satsangha Society of India. it's a pla- flagship organization of paramhansa yogananda that has built a very good platform at the entrance of this cave this place has been a very profound experience for me i was not expecting but when i sat in front of baba ji 
all the last three years since uh, my twin flame passed away, uh, the three and a half years that I have been going through, um, Baba Ji's guidance has been very profound. Uh, it kept increasing, it kept becoming stronger. And somehow I mentally felt that this calling uh, that I received and uh, the way I actually reached this place was obviously not a coincidence and there was some sort of a closure, some cycle was getting at the end and there was something that began uh, at that place. I'm at the first place of uh, Avtar Babaji cave. I just came out from meditation. It was a very, very profound uh, experience. I was completely burst out in tears when I entered the room. We are still going to go up uh, in the actual cave where Baba Ji used to sit. In in a few moments, I think there is a very less space there, so there there is one batch that is already meditating over there. Um, we will go in the second batch. So it was very overwhelming for me and um, I'm having this inner knowing uh, after visiting this place that there is a new phase of my journey that has become begun, whether it is in the context of my twin flame journey or my spiritual ascension, there is definitely some new significant chapter that unfolded at this place. Um, at the uh, when I was meditating at the cave, we meditated in the cave almost for one hour and uh, I won't be able to describe in words what sort of experience that was. I think anybody who really wants to experience the vibration has to visit this cave someday in their life to understand how uh, such a high vibration can impact you on so many levels of your soul.